Now let's look at another whole concept, and that is the use of a CMOS sensor. CMOS stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. Uh, again, has a lot of things that it has learned from CCD, but a CMOS, of course, is a little cheaper, and it's something which actually you will be uh, you're using all the time because most of the cameras, the small cameras that you see, and in fact, even the high-end cameras, now all move to using CMOS sensors as opposed to CCDs. Here are a few interesting differences between CCDs versus CMOS sensors. One thing to note is, of course, uh, as we talked about before, there are these bare patterns, but ben beneath the bare patterns are these uh, photodiodes. We can refer to all of them as basically photocytes. This is where, of course, information is captured and converted into light intensities and colors. So these regions are the photocytes for either one of them. Basically, any of these regions is a photocyte, and we want to be able to capture information from these photocytes. So the big difference is the photocytes in a CCD are passive and actually do no work whatsoever. As soon as something is captured, information is then moved over, and there is an amplifier that's used to kind of take the exact values and amplify it to a scale that can be measured by the uh, storage device that comes in. So I'm just showing an example of how things are copied over, one row at a time, and then saved. Photocytes in CMOS actually have an amplifier right there, and actually they can do local processing. So the readout at each and every one of them is local, as opposed to, uh, in this case, not really global, but actually it's done after all of things have been stored. Here, every readout is done at the local sensor itself. So in essence, there is a small local amplifier at each and every one of the photocytes. So each and every point here, every photocyte has its own amplifier. So of course, that allows them to do local processing. One thing to note here is this is one of the traditional problems that if you play around with video on your cell handheld camera or a cell phone camera, you see something called a rolling shutter artifact. We'll actually, in one of the applications, talk about how we can get a rolling shutter. It's something which uh, we have done a lot of research on. But basically, one of the reasons for rolling shutter is because of the readout that's happening at each and every photo site, if the camera is moving faster than the readout is, you will see... Uh, some sort of uh, rolling artifacts, some non-rigidity in a scene or some bending of a scene. That is just because when this thing is read, and by the time this is read, the scene may have changed. And that is an artifact that's common in especially lower-end uh, CMOS sensors. Higher-end ones have a much faster readout rate and can do much better.